Hello YouTube. I just wanted to let you guys know that since I'm recording this video at the last minute, I didn't have time to think up a funny cold open. Sorry. Greetings one and all, and welcome back to Tom's Hit Parade. Uh, this is going to be a relatively short video because, as I just mentioned in my cold open, I decided to kind of throw it together at the last minute. And, well, I didn't really throw it together. I mean, I put some thought into it and some listening, as you'll see in just a few minutes here. Yes, the main attraction uh, today is going to be, since I did an unboxing video of it, uh, about it's been about a month ago, I guess. I guess it took that long for me to listen to eight CDs. Uh, I guess I unboxed. My good friend, my little brother Noah, decided to send me a mystery CD grab box of eight CDs uh, that, about a month ago, I said, as I said. And uh, so, yes, I'm going to do a bargain bag style breakdown of them uh, now that I've finished listening to them, tell you what I thought of them, uh, going in rough order from cast offs to keepers, just like I do with bargain bag. Uh, so, I decided to make a little video out of it. And uh, but uh, before we get to that, I wanted to mention a couple of little random things. Uh, first of all, after three years of thinking about it and about two years of actually having the uh, homepage up on YouTube with no content in it and months of hemming and hawing and finally uh, deciding to write out the script and planning it and the, of the intro video and planning it and all that, I finally recorded this weekend and uploaded the first video in on my uh, new channel called Trek Ease. It's I'd, I'd call it a companion channel, but it's doesn't its content is not really related to music at all. Uh, it is basically my channel, uh, my little corner of YouTube, where I talk about my obsession with Star Trek and other directly and indir indirectly related geek stuff. So yes, it's basically whatever I geek out about, uh, I'm going to talk about eventually on that channel. So primarily Star Trek, as in, uh, suggested by the title Trekkies. But uh, yeah, pop on over there. Uh, the link to the channel is in my description below. So yeah, check it out if you're if you're interested in Star Trek or anything sci-fi, fantasy, or even just uh, well, who knows what topics uh, this channel that channel will cover. Uh, I, I don't want to have any real set, concrete boundaries on it. Uh, well, except you know, of course, music is this is the home for music talk. Uh, although I may do a crossover episode or two at some point. Uh, a, a little hint of, about that, it is related to my Hold Arn CD collection, so, yes. Well, you, you may see me cross over, and I might do ep, uh, a video that will appear on both channels, so that I can kind of get that uh, cross-traffic happening, you know? Funny hand gestures. Anyway, so yes, go check out that channel if you like, if, if, you, if you want a good laugh, I don't know. Anyway... Uh, aside from that, uh, I wanted to talk about since I don't do since I don't really do playlist videos, at least not regularly anymore. That was where I talked about uh, notable music passings, um, deaths in the world of music and uh, entertainment that uh, I would do at the beginnings of each of those videos. I don't do the, don't do those regularly anymore. So, a few notable passings in the world of music have happened recently. First of all, Angela Lansbury. She was age ninety six. So. Yes, I heard that her cause of death was being 96. So anyway, uh, I just like to use that joke whenever somebody who's, you know, at advanced age passes away. Gee, what did they die from? I don't know. Maybe they died from being 96. Anyway, uh, she was, you know, jokes aside, she was a fantastic actress. Uh, she was better known for her acting than her singing, although she won, what did she win, three Tony Awards, I think, over the course of her career. And, of course, uh, she is most famous in song, for her voice, lending her voice to the Disney animated movie Beauty and the Beast. So yes, a, an absolutely essential part of pop culture uh, for, for everybody, really. Uh, you, you, you can't really have uh, lived, you, you haven't really lived until you've watched Beauty and the Beast. But yes, uh, rest in peace, Angela Lansbury, Dame Angela Lansbury. She was British-American. Uh, another uh, uh, nanogenarian, Nanogenarian or nonogenarian, I'm not sure of the term, uh, who just passed away is Loretta Lynn. She was age 90, a uh, legendary country musician, uh, although I only have one of her CDs, and it's a more recent one uh, produced by Jack White of the White Stripes. One of the reasons I picked it up was because it was featured in a Backtracks video. It, it, it had an anniversary, and I saw it in the store just before I did the video, bought it, and so good timing that way. But it turns out it was a really good album. 
and it also has a song in it on it called Portland, Oregon. So how, how can I not feel connected to that album in, in some way? And finally, a, a rather untimely and kind of shocking death in the world of music was uh, Coolio. He was only 59 years old, and yet he passed away. Uh, official cause of death is listed as cardiac arrest, so maybe he just just passed away of natural causes, although it's, you know, it's arguably not really natural to die before you've uh, gone out of your 50s. Uh, but uh, yeah, they're, they're supposedly doing an investigation. Uh, no foul play is suspected, but uh, so it may just be cardiac arrest, or he may have had a con congenital condition, or, or who knows. But anyway, uh, cause of death aside, uh, Godspeed Coolio and Loretta Lynn and Angela Lansbury. Yes, they've... Uh, Legends who, uh, at least one of which, went before his time. Okay. Honestly, everybody goes before their time, don't they really? Yeah, when you think about it. Anyway, philosophy aside, let's go ahead and get down to the breakdown. Let's get down to the breakdown of uh, my the mystery CD grab box that my little brother Noah sent to me. Uh, he had eight CDs in the in the mix here, and some of them he just picked up just thought uh, some of them he just picked up for fun and some some of them he thought maybe I would have an interest in them uh, he knows I have a somewhat of an interest in Americana slash country kind of stuff uh, so a couple of these CDs are in that vein uh, first we have Shrimp City Slim this was a, a live album and it was okay it just was not quite my thing it's a, a little bit too country it almost re reached into the bluegrass type of stuff and yeah just didn't think much of it, and uh, unfortunately, another one I did not think much of was um, Mark Henderson and Lou Stant with uh, a Rambler Soul. Yes, this is very much. Oh, sorry, I'm a little bit uh, uh, too far, too too much in the center of the frame to show the CDs. Uh, yes, this was uh, the on the folk side of country, which I normally kind of like, but uh, yeah, this stuff was very. They're perfectly capable mu capable musicians. It's just it was very kind of ordinary. Gotta say, just nothing spectacular about the singing or about the lyrics or about the melodies. Yeah, and it was a locally produced or a, a uh, um, self-produced. That's what I'm trying to say. Album. So uh, another one that I I really liked the title of, at least the name of the band is that liberal band. So uh, yes, this is a. Uh, I guess the al the title of the album is 1999, and what I didn't care much for, uh, they're from Kansas, as you can tell by the outline of the uh, state on the back. It's basically a, a marching band, or a, a, I don't know if it's a school band necessarily, but uh, yeah, and uh, it the recording quality is not great. It was okay, but just not great, and yeah, the marching band kind of stuff, I mean, as you can see, the uh, the first section of the album is called Pep Band. This was basically uh, stuff that you would hear on the football field, you know, marching band songs and that kind of thing. And uh, it didn't pick up a whole lot from there. Just fairly unremarkable. I mean, I, I'm sure they're pretty good musicians. Just, you know, stuff, uh, as I've said before, I've got so many CDs and I've listened to so much music that stuff really has to grab me in order to really make an impression. This next one... Um, I want to do a video at some point about uh, artists that I just can't get into, and some of whom I wish I could get into. And this definitely falls in the wish I could category. Kylie Minogue. Uh, this is her album Fever, and yeah, she again she's got a, an excellent voice. Uh, it's just I I don't know if it's her style of music. It's very much pop. Um, you know the the uh, I don't want to say teen pop. But that's kind of, the st you know, this was made in 2001. So when you think, you know, early Britney Spears, early Christina Aguilera, uh, early Mandy Moore, that, you know, a lot of that stuff really sounds the same to me after a while. So, and sad to say, it's, uh, it's hard for me to really, it's hard for any pop divas to really jump out at me. Uh, I, I just, you know, I like female artists, well enough. You know, it, it's it's not a gender thing. It's just, for some reason, solo female pop artists, it really takes something unusual for them to jump out at me. So, yes, sad to say, Kylie Minogue's album Fever 
Just in, and this is not the first Kylie Minogue album I've listened to. I've listened to a couple others, and they just they just don't do a thing for me. I hate to say it. Now this one I actually had before, and I can't remember how I got how I uh, came into it, but it's uh, an album called Compa. I think that's how you pronounce it, and it's by the Gypsy Kings. This is their 1997 album, and they are a Latin uh, band and. I have their, at least, do I, do I still have? Yes, I still have a Greatest Hits CD of theirs that was, uh, I inherited from my aunt and uncle's collection. Well, inherited in so much as they are still alive. But, uh, and, and I'm keeping that mainly because it's, it was from them. And I would like to keep this because it's from Noah, so it has that significance there. But I don't know, it's just, yeah, there's just not much that jumps out at me. Besides, I will be keeping at least two of the CDs in here, and I've got several others in my collection that are were gifts from Noah that I have a very strong attachment to. So, sad to say, this Gypsy Kings album just didn't didn't cut the mustard for me. <laughs> Get it? Mustard kind of well. I, I guess that's that's more of a burnt orange than a yellow, isn't it? Oh well. Anyway, <laughs> a a failed metaphor there. Anyway, the the last of the castoffs in this group is an artist called Sash, and this guy is EDM, dance pop kind of stuff. Um, yeah, it's just, uh, I went through a phase uh, about a couple of years ago where I really liked that stuff, got a lot of it, but uh, since then, several, about almost half of what I had, I eventually got rid of just because I kind of got tired of it. Uh, I'm keeping several albums in that genre, but not a whole lot of them, and this one, sad to say, did not... Um, really grabbed me and there is there are a couple of guest artists on here that um but the print is so small that you can barely read it so i don't know you might be able to read it in the close-up there but uh, yeah suffice to say sash didn't quite uh make the grade for me this time but i'm keeping two cds out of this bunch not a great average but hey it's it's something and this one is, this one is only my second favorite of the bunch, but it is the biggest surprise out of this thing. I thought for sure this was going to be a cast off. It just did not look promising at all. It's called Raisins in the Sun, and it is. Uh, I'm guessing that's the name of the group, but it's got like uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven artists on it. I thought it was a compilation, but uh, it appears to be an album, just kind of like a group effort from all those artists. At least, at least I think it is. Uh, but yeah, I listened to it, and there are several nice, catchy songs on here. So uh, it is from the Rounder Records label. I have uh, I have a handful of CDs uh, from that label, so it's it's a nice label. But uh, yeah, uh, the only one of these guys that I had heard of before is Chuck Prophet. Uh, I had never heard of the other guys before, but uh, yeah, a handful of good songs on here. Uh, Chicken Fried is one of the uh, uh, track names on here. Uh, Candy from a Stranger, that's another uh, one of the good songs. And, uh, oh, I Taught Her Everything, that's another standout on this album. So, yeah, very good thing. But the surprise, the winner, winner, chicken dinner, as I keep saying, or since since Noah's a vegetarian, maybe it's a winner, winner, tofu dinner. Anyway, uh, Sandra Bernhard, yes, the actress who is most famous for her recurring role on the original Roseanne series. Yes, this is a studio album. She she did a few comedy albums uh, before this, but this was her first studio album. Uh, primarily songs, a few spoken word pieces, and spoken word interludes. But uh, yeah, it's it's pretty good stuff. Uh, some of the songs are are humorous. Some of the songs are not. So it's kind of a mixture. Some of it's a little weird. I'll admit, and uh, most of it does sound a little bit dated. It's from nineteen ninety four. So, you know, it, it's it's a bit dated in the sound, but honestly, she's got a great voice. M a much better voice than I thought she would have. Uh, yeah, and uh, she does a few covers on here, actually. Uh, Manic Superstar, which is actually a retitling and slight lyrical reworking. Actually, I think it's a pretty, pretty significant lyrical reworking of Manic Depression, the Jimi Hendrix song. She does a good job on that, and also uh, she does a pretty much straight-ahead lyrical cover of the Rolling Stones song, Sympathy for the Devil. That's a very good one. And also the uh, 
was it Paul Simon or a Simon and Garfunkel song, 50 Ways to Leave Your Lover. And uh, she, it's, uh, she alters the lyrics so that, uh, you know, uh, uh, get on the bus, Gus, you know, all those, those uh, sayings with male names. She changes the lyrics so that they are with, uh, they are rhymes with female names. So it's a, a, a gender modified lyrics uh, for that song. That, that's what I'm trying to say to make a long story even longer. Anyway, very good album. Very, very entertaining. I'm definitely keeping this one as well as the Raisins in the Sun uh, CD. Uh, but yeah, very good, very good stuff. I, I was really appreciate, uh, really enjoyed this. And so thank you, Noah. Really, really appreciate this. Um, and if, if the mood strikes you again, uh, this was so much fun. I, you know, not to make you spend more money than you need to spend, but if the if the mood strikes you again to whip me up another mystery CD grab box, go for it. Uh, this could be fun, you know, once or twice a year maybe. Who knows? Again, not to pressure into into spending money. But anyway, this video has gone on long enough, so let's go ahead and wrap it up. It's longer than I thought it was going to be. Anyway, that'll do it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If so, hit that like button and share it with your friends, and give me your thoughts, questions, suggestions or constructive criticisms in the comments section below. Also, scroll down to the description for links to my Twitter and Instagram feeds and links to my Trekkies channel and links to my favorite fellow YouTubers who are all worth watching. Uh, and don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet and browse my past videos. And be sure to ring that notification bell so you'll be the first to know each time I drop a new video. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. And remember, life's too short to be a music snob.